Hi everyone, I'm Tracy and welcome to today's video. So I put together a like a recommendations list of brushes that I feel are very important to have more than one or maybe, maybe even more than two. And so this is more for people that have kind of have most of their bases covered and are trying to figure out what other brushes to get even though you already have one like that or two. And the main reason I wanted to put this together is to prevent you guys from investing in too much of one kind of brush. And, you know, um, cause this is what I did. I kind of just went out and bought what I wanted to buy, you know, after I already had my bases covered. And these are the ones that I feel are, these are the type of brushes that I feel are utilize the most like I don't have as many of these just sitting in storage so let's start out with I feel like the most important and this is the type of brush I get asked a lot you know how many foundation brushes should I have so yeah I'm talking about a foundation brush and I this is the type of brush I really wasn't interested in buying more of you know they're not very they're not as interesting, I guess, but I have, um, I mean, at this point I have a pretty decent amount and I use most of them mainly because a foundation brush needs to be washed a lot. Now you can get away with, you know, using one for an extended period of time, but because you're putting, you know, a cream or liquid in these hairs, it's more likely to build, you know, bacteria or fungus or whatever. And when you're constantly pressing that brush on your face, it can like transfer to your skin and cause breakouts and everything. So when I started washing my foundation brush regularly, I noticed a huge reduction in like the surface breakouts that I got. And yeah, I think this is a very, very important one to have you know, a clean one or a fairly clean one always on hand. What you can do is you can get like two different kinds of foundation brush. You can get one like this, which is like a painting type of foundation brush. This is the Ehoto LQ3 and the Yuki Takashima number five. You can't get this one, but you can get this one. It doesn't have to be this one. You can even get a, you know, a less expensive synthetic one just to get the foundation on and then get into like little areas like this. And then you can get a larger, fluffier foundation brush like this um, Yoshiki, Koyuro Yoshiki face brush. You know, you can even use the Ruffer 37 just to kind of buff that product in and smooth everything out and even everything out. So yeah, these are two of my favorites for that step. There, there's a lot of options in this category. I even use the uh, Chikuhoto T3 a lot to kind of smooth everything out. And um, almost every time I do my makeup, I do use two different foundation brushes. Another one that's kind of in between these two brushes, if you don't want to get, you know, maybe you just want to get one more and call it a day, the Chikuhoto T11, because it's got that shape kind of like this Ehoto, it can get into smaller spaces, but it can also buff product in. I don't like using a brush like this or like this, like a dense brush with a lot of hairs. I don't like to use this brush to like dip into my foundation because it gets very difficult to wash when the foundation gets in there. A brush like this is much easier to wash. This is weasel hair, so it's easier to clean. These dry really fast. A brush like this is gonna take uh, a lot longer to dry. In general, I wash maybe two of my foundation brushes every week. And this one is usually one and this one is usually the other. As far as the fluffier ones, you can get away with washing this less because it doesn't get as dirty. Okay, and then another brush that I highly recommend having multiples of is a blush and bronzer brush. So for example, um, I'm gonna use, and I didn't do this step yet, so I'm gonna use this Chikuhoto T2 to set my cream bronzer with some powder. 
so and that's what I've been using this brush for you know for the past couple weeks so you can see there's a lot of product in there I do wipe this off but at some point you're just not going to be able to get that bronzer out so I have cream bronzer and blush on so I'm going to set that with this brush and I only use this brush for bronzer. You could use it for blush, it's kind of big, but you don't want this color mixing in with your blush because it's gonna alter the color of your blush. So I think this is kind of self-explanatory, but this will help kind of keep your products, you know, separated instead of mixing the blush and the bronzer and then you know, you can go in with a smaller blush brush like this um, Hana Sakura blush brush from Muragishi Sangyo. I even like the Chikohodo Z4 just to... I'll try the Z4. I haven't used this one much. And then, you know, go in with your blush with something like this in a smaller area. I do have a lot of brushes that I use for bronzer and blush but I try not to mix them with those two products as much as I can. So yeah, something like that. Um, I do like having like a bigger angled brush on hand and like a smaller, more precise blush brush. So oftentimes I'm using like this one and something like this. Okay, and then um, this is kind of self-explanatory. I would say eye blending brushes is really important to have multiples of because, you know, let's say I'm using this little blender like the J5529 from Hakuhodo. I saturate this brush pretty heavily with shadow as you can see. So, you know, you don't want to mix this with other colors. And then I have the Refer 13 with this green color. You know, you don't want to mix them. So having two little blenders, I think, is essential. And then I also highly recommend having a fluffier blending brush like the Bisciotto GB1 or the Sonia G Classic Crease to do a final blend. So, you know, you can either dip these in like, you know, loose powder or just keep them clean to do a final blend. So that's what I recommend for eye brushes. Oh, and also, and this is a pretty inexpensive brush to buy, and that is a liner brush. So because you're putting, this is the um, Mizuho MB 130, 130 or 133, I'll put it down below, and this is the Ehoro GS3. So I used both of these today. I liked this angle one for the lower lash line and I used this um, round one for the top lash line. But you can use these, you know, in any area. But because a brush like this is going to go really close to, you know, the, the rim of your eye, you don't want this to get dirty and then put it back on your eye. It's going to cause those little, like little bumps on your you know, like right on the rim of your eye. So I, I try to keep these clean. I wash these pretty regularly, like every week. So I would say maybe I'll use this like two or three times and it gets a wash. Same with this one. And they're very easy brushes to wash. So it's not difficult. It'll dry, you know, in probably 10 minutes. So I would have multiples of these like in different shapes and sizes. I also like having a pencil brush like this on hand. I don't have one right now, but I usually do. So yeah, have a bunch of these and it'll prevent, you know, from, it will prevent, you know, eye problems from coming up. And I have noticed since I've been doing this, I don't get those like, like underneath the eyelid kind of infections. I used to get those all the time. And I think because I'm just, cleaning my brushes, taking better care of them. That's really helping out. Something that I bought a lot of, and I'll show you. I bought a lot of eye packing brushes. And because I love buying these kind of brushes, I really, really like having these. But this is a type of brush that I don't think you need a lot of. Just, you know, letting you know, 
I kind of stick to um, like a small number of them. Like this is the Hakuhodo J242HS. I've been using this for a long time. And I would, um, when I'm looking at, these are all my packing brushes. A lot of them I don't use. Some of them I've never used because, you know, you have a couple sizes and I feel like you don't really need to replace those very often. A lot of times they're made of horse hair or weasel hair and these are very durable um, hair types. And so like this one I've had forever, it's still in perfect condition. You know, have a couple and, you know, call it a day. They're also very easy to wash. And yeah, I mean, I do like having a lot, but I would say of the different types of eye brushes, this is the type of brush that I feel like I over bought right here. Well, I mean, no, I take that back. I overbought every kind of eye brush. These are all the different types of eye brushes. So, I mean, I have a brush channel, but when I was taking, um, taking account of all the different eye brushes, that's the one that I feel like I really went overboard. So I hope this helps you guys out when it's, you know, when you're deciding what kind of brushes to get. And um, yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.